Hello, I'm Dr. Kim Kyung Won of Dr. Step Easy Hands On. Today, I'm going to talk about last kit. Last kit is lateral approach sinus kit for safe elevation of sinus uh, membrane. And after that, you can do bone grafting and place implant. So it's a sinus surgery kit for lateral approach. So what are the characteristics of this kit? First, lateral window uh, can be formed more easily and safely with this kit. Uh, you see the core drill in this diagram, and it has inverted cone shape and rounded edge design, uh, same as the cast drill. And we also have dome drill, so you can also grind window. In other words, sound membrane can be uh, protected, and the lateral window can be formed more easily. It also has various sinus instruments so that you can safely and uh, elevate the sinus membrane more uh, widely. Thirdly, the, you can use this type of bone graft carrier. So sinus lateral approach after that is done in doing bone grafting, grafting uh, saliva being contaminated or leading to second infection uh, can be prevented for more easy bone grafting. So let's see what the component of this kit is. Uh, in the upper deck, we have tools for lateral window formation. So dome drill and core drill, and it also has stopper. In the lower deck, uh, it has tools for sinus membrane elevation. So for sinus uh, surgery, uh, instruments are included. And you, we also have tools for bone grafting. So first, uh, let's talk about dome drill. In the last uh, kit, there are two types of drill. First, dome drill is uh, where you can more easily and quickly form window, and it perforation of the membrane or membrane damage can be uh, prevented. Uh, so it grinds the lateral uh, window. So this is how it looks. Diameter, you have 5.5 and 7.0, two types. And dome drill, uh, the cutting itself uh, has smooth cutting force, and it has a minimal expulsion. This means that while grinding, uh, you can collect bone chips. Uh, the blade allows for that, and it forms, a, again, bone chips. And it, because it's in dome shape, in lateral approach, if the surgical field is too narrow, then you can tilt it uh, and drill. Next uh, is wide dome drill. When you do formation with dome drill, uh, when you grind, the window could actually on the center part be narrow. And if you have narrow window, you can then use wide dome drill so that you can widen the lateral window. And if necessary, uh, you can use this tool for further expansion. So the recommended RPM is about 12 to 1500. So width is 7 millimeters, and then you have side wall drill, and side wall drill is after wide dome drill. If you have sharp bony edges, then this is a drill to remove sharp edge of bony windows. So side, you can cut side uh, wall, so it has the drill for that, and the tip to uh, safely protect the sinus membrane, it has dome shape of drill tip. And here, uh, in the lateral drill, to for the length, you mount stopper. And uh, we use cast uh, drill stopper with the sidewall drill. So sidewall drill uh, uses uh, the cast uh, kit. And the dimension is? like 12 millimeters casket stopper. If you mount then, then sidewall drilling uh, depth will be five uh, millimeters. So five millimeters of the drill will be protruding. And if you have a, a stop of eight millimeters, then the blade length of the drill will be 1.0. So you can um, use it more safely. Next is core drill and dome drill lateral window, you grind it uh, for formation, but core drill, 
uh, forms the bone lid uh, while drilling. So bone as you form bone lid with the convention, conventional drill and you can also form bone chips between blades and basically the drill concept uh, has uses the same design of cutting blade of cast drill so more safely uh, without damaging sinus membrane you can form window with this core drill next we also have in the last kit the dome drill and core drill uh, with it uh, we have the stopper to mount on those drills the basic concept of stopper is from 0 0.5 we also have 3.0 millimeters so these numbers uh, indicate that if you mount 0 0.5 millimeters the blade uh, will expose by 0 0.5 and if you use 3 millimeters of a stopper then the drill blade will be exposed by 3 millimeters so if you form lateral window in the sinus wall uh, thickness is about one millimeters so if you have about three millimeters then safely you can form lateral windows without any uh, problems now uh, it, there is a bone separator this is a tool to remove a bone lid stuck inside the uh, core uh, uh, drill so if you have lid left in the center uh, it's very hard to remove that, but uh, for that, you can use this instrument. Sinus curette. Sinus, this is tool for uh, elevating uh, sinus membrane, and we have a short form and long form. If you use the short uh, one, then uh, in the um, shallow area close to window, uh, you can use this for elevating the membrane. If it's a long format, it's uh, longer, uh, so it has uh, three curvatures. So within sinus cavity, whichever location, direction, it's uh, very easily accessible with this long curette. So in the inside, on the up to mesial wall, uh, you can fully widely elevate the uh, membrane. Next is membrane separator. So the separator on one side has around the dome shape. So physioelectric uh, kit uh, is something that uh, is you will think about because very similar. So when you open the window, so in other words, when you do initial detachment, if you use this uh, side of the tip, you can very easily uh, separate uh, the uh, remove bony window and detach sinus membrane initial stage and then you have this other uh, side so this other side is used to fill bone graft inside the sinus uh, cavity via a crystal uh, drill uh, hole so uh, as a plug you can feel the material material next is freer elevator as an instrument uh, that i use most frequently and a lot of procedure can be performed uh, with this so on one side that you it you can be used to separate the lateral window or to elevate the sinus membrane and it can also used uh, be used for bone grafting on the other side the bended part is for sinus membrane elevation uh, and basically freer elevator tip the width is five millimeters so it's a, a bit on the wide side so using this very safely you can um, elevate sinus membrane Next is bone graft carrier. On one side, you have this type of spatula uh, shape. So graft material, uh, without contaminating the mouth, uh, you can bring it to the lateral window uh, and do bone grafting. So it can be used to carry bone graft materials. And on the other side, uh, the freer elevators uh, width, I said, was five millimeter, but this is a bit a uh, narrow uh, tip. It's uh, three millimeters in with so if the lateral window side that you formed is a bit narrow then you can use this narrow tip uh, for membrane elevation so last technique basic procedure is the following basically there are two techniques 
can use dome drill, or you could also use core drill. So if you use a dome drill, the same as a lateral wall, uh, you grind it uh, in the window formation. So that's how you uh, form window through grinding of the sinus lateral wall. And core drill technique, uh, you uh, form lateral bony uh, window with round bone lid. So that will be the core drill technique. Now let's uh, explain about the practice of easy hands-on. The easy hands-on practice will be uh, we'll be using last kit and lateral approach, and go to sinus cavity, do sinus bone graft, and then place implant. Using mock-up, I'll show you that procedure. So the mock-up that we prepared in terms of residual bone height in number 16 and number 17, if two are missing, then uh, four millimeters number 16 and three millimeters for number 17. So for these two uh, teeth uh, using the dome and core drills, we will uh, form the window and then uh, using sinus kits, you will use the instrument to, to elevate the sinus membrane and then do bone grafting and place implant. So basically, number 16, we will use TS uh, 4.5 10 millimeter implant, and number 17, we will use 5.0 8.5 millimeter length uh, implant. So using dome drill, we first create bony window, and there, uh, wide uh, drill, we expand further, do sinus me membrane elevation, bone grafting, and place implant. And with the core drill technique, we form first bony window, but uh, with this drill, sometimes you have a, a bit narrow window, then we do overlap and create a window next to it so that lateral window can be wider. Then after that, we elevate the sinus membrane, graft the bones, and then place implant. And through hands-on, I'll show you how to do it. So I'll see you in the hands-on part. So uh, now I'll start the hands-on of last kit. Numbers again, 16 and 17 is missing cases. And last kit dome drill technique will be performed first, and then I'll move to the cold drill. So number 16, about uh, bone height remaining is four millimeters. Number 17 is three millimeters or so. So for your understanding, the sinus floor, I will mark it first. So like this, you see sinus floor. And uh, dome drill diameter, you have 5.0 and 7.0. Uh, so first I use the 5.1 and then use the 7.1. So first 5.5 uh, will be chosen. So 5.5 dome drill, there are two uh, dome drills, 5.5 and 7.0. So I use 5.5 pers uh, with the uh, stopper. Uh, like this, that is 0 0.5 millimeters. So 0 0.5 millimeter means the blade is not very visible because it's too short. But anyway, lateral window on the uh, sinus floor and on the uh, front part about 2 to 3 millimeters uh, uh, gap, I will first form the uh, window with this instrument like this. And it's only five millimeters, so it's only uh, zero point five millimeters. In other words, so uh, next I will use one millimeter stopper. That means that you will see a bit of the bl drill blade. So like this. So you see the diameter is a bit on the narrow side. 
So dome drill will switch from 5.5 to bigger one, 7.0 diameter dome drill. Then again, stopper. Uh, we will first use one millimeter stopper first. So mount that stopper. So drill, you see a bit protruding. Again, with the dome drill, lateral window is grinded. So as you can see, there is a bit of perforation, but it's still very thin. So I will use 1.5 uh, stopper. Lateral wall thickness is about 1 millimeter, but there is a banded area. So I'll go uh, now with 1.5 stopper. So 7 millimeter diameter uh, dome drill with 1.5 stopper. And as you can see, 1.5 stopper, you see, like this, the sinus on the lateral wall side, you see a bit of perforation. So, that's it. I think 1.5 is uh, sufficient. Then, uh, we the hole is a bit on the narrow side, so we now opt for wide dome drill, 7.0 diameter, but it's a bit wide on the uh, front. Stopper 1.5 mounted. Like this, with the wide dome drill, you see there is a bit of expansion, widening. So sinus, you see, uh, has been um, widened and uh, there is sinus mucosa and sinus has been, you know, penetrated. The sinus mucosa, but there is a bit thin area remaining. So I will use sidewall uh, drill to remove it. Sidewall drill is this one. So this one, uh, stopper, we use cast uh, uh, stopper, so with side wall drill. And we use 9mm cast stopper, we, so we mount that on the side wall drill. Then side wall drill, drilling apart is about two millimeter truded. So the sharp um, area, we uh, push it like this, the, the dome shaped part can protect sinus membrane. So we uh, round it so that the sharp part can be removed. So uh, the thin remaining part with the side wall drill has been all removed. So with the wide dome drill, we do the widening and then of the sinus instruments first for the initial detachment, like rounded part can be used. Then the sinus and lateral window and with between membrane and bone, initial detachment uh, can be done. So f without hurting the membrane, very easily you can detach the uh, membrane. Now, uh, personally, the freer elevator uh, part, I use it. So the width is 5 millimeter here. So depending your preference, uh, I think uh, you the part you go first is different, but I think this top part uh, might be the easiest. And if necessary, the mesial area is then detached because that is kind of very a thin one. So in the clinical setting, elevating sinus membrane, um, if you elevate it's easy to tear. So sinus membrane, you uh, let it touch the bone and push it, then sinus membrane can be easily detached and membrane will be elevated. 
So like this, even on the inside, uh, on the deep side, uh, so even on the sinus medial side, even to the nose lateral wall side, even on the inside, you need to fully uh, detach uh, so that uh, there could be wider uh, elevation. And then sinus curette, the short part. Using the short one, like this, sinus membrane can be elevated. And if uh, going a bit deep, like this, it has three uh, curvatures. So on the uh, front part, like this, on the distal side, the upper side, if you access like this, then with the sinus curette, you can go and access any direction. And on the using the long uh, part, then like this, even uh, deep side, uh, inside, on, even on the mesial wall side, uh, you can go in. So even on the um, inside, the mesial cavity lateral side, you can go in. So on the distal, the, using the opposite uh, side, you can fully access and go in. So if you use sinus instrument uh, properly, then sinus membrane can be very safely and fully elevated. Now it's all been elevated. Now I will do drilling. And one to two taper kit will be used. First, drilling site will be marked. Then, first, guided drill will be used. So if you're worried about hurting or tearing sinus membrane, then in clinical setting, you don't have to like fully, uh, you know, open it like this, but like this, you protect and then you mark the drill uh, hole area. And then, parallel pin will be put on, then number 17, like this, we uh, mark the drilling site, then again, pa parallel pin used to check the drilling uh, position, and you check the occlusion, and as you can see, the functional cusp on the uh, lower side drilling path can be confirmed. And number 16, TS3, 4.5, uh, 10 millimeter, and number 75.0, 8.5 millimeter uh, fixture will be placed. So re bone uh, remaining is 4 and 3 millimeters. So drill uh, will just uh, uh, use 8.5. So first with the straight uh, drill, I will expand the hole first. And as you can see, this is 2.2 diameter uh, drill. And from here, again, you um, drill sufficiently. Remain bone 94 and 3 millimeters. So you don't op have to opt for uh, 3.5, uh, the long one. So I will just go with 8.5. So diameter 8.5. And uh, fixture 3.5 will be used. And like this. And also, here also, uh, fixture 3.5. And number 16, uh, we'll go up to 4.5. So with 8.5 uh, drill, I'll do the final drilling. So number 16 drilled uh, with the final drill. 4 point fixture 4.5 and number 17 is 5.0 8.5 millimeters uh, final drilling so now I'll go for bone grafting as you can see with the free elevator I put the graft material uh, in here. And if needed, then like this, in bone carrier, 
the graft material is put in so that more smoothly the bone grafting is can be done on the sinus like this with the free elevator i do will do drilling clinically because the uh, patient is lying down bone grafting goes toward the back side and the on the the opposite side of the free elevator can be used and move like this to prevent uh, the material from going too much toward the back and as i said before just in case uh, using this plugger uh, tip uh, the drilled location along the drill hole like this you can also uh, do the bone grafting so depending on position if you are just wondering whether material has gone in uh, or not then along the drill hole from the crystal side of the graft material uh, you can check that it goes in uh, properly that's important and if you think window is, is too small or narrow then again freer elevate diameter uh, the width is uh, five millimeters and this one one has bone carrier is uh, narrower three millimeter so even the uh, narrow site uh, bone grafting can be performed uh, very well and if the material is uh, dry then while doing grafting with the, if it touch, goes in touch with sal saliva then biofilm can uh, be formed and contaminated leading resulting in infection so like this hydrated bone graft material don't push it toward too much uh, toward the back and be cautious about about that in doing the grafting so make sure it doesn't go toward too much back I think uh, grafting is almost complete now using the mount driver TS3 10 mm implant of 5.5 uh, uh, diameter will be uh, installed like this it's placed and oral before putting it uh, delivering orally uh, check that it's in the right mode and then place the uh, implant so in the drilled site like this you place implant i think it's almost done next ts3 diameter 5.0 length 8.5 implant fixture like with the pre-mount you check and you check again that it's in the right mode and then place the implant and if it's placed then using the hand wrench implant will be placed in the final uh, depth in case ts3 residual bone height uh, if you go you go minus one, uh, one millimeter but if the residual uh, bone height is uh, not sufficient you go bone level because you cannot go too deep but if you go slightly uh, deeper than bone level it will be good and you check uh, that there is a uh, sufficient primary stability and so like this uh, the implant uh, fixture has been installed and cleft material is uh, protruding so again you know put that in place and after that you check occlusion then as planned you see it's been done correctly uh, in the correct site then pre-mount the mount will be removed with the open wrench because if stability is weak it can get loose so like this you uh, loosen it and same for this also and you know you put in cover screw then implant placement is complete we use dome drill so we grinded window and the window uh, there's no, no need for repositioning so you can just suture cover up like this or you could just cover it with collagen membrane uh, first and that's it so this is how it's complete so compare the sinus 
You see, on this side, the membrane has been fully elevated, and bone grafting and uh, implant placement, you can confirm, has been done. So, the second uh, part of the last kit practice is uh, forming window with core drill and then do sinus grafting. So core drill diameter, you have 5.5 uh, and 7.0, but 5.5 is a bit too small, so we will use a 7.0 drill. And then, last kit stopper, we'll start with 0.5. So, 0.5 stopper will be like this, mounted. And sinus floor is already uh, formed, so on the 2 3 millimeters uh, from the uh, front and back side of the floor, uh, we'll go in to form window. Uh, so indentation with 0 0.5. And yeah, 0 0.5 is a bit too small. So we will now go with 1.0 stopper. And as you can see, core drill, we mounted the stopper. Then one millimeter of a, a drill is protruding. So again, go in. Like this, if you drill, then as you can see, if you remove stopper in core drill, you see the bone chips have been collected. So window is not fully formed, so I'll go one up again, 1.5. 1.5 stopper mounted to the core drill. Like this, we form the window. And as you can see, still, the window is not fully uh, detached. So, 2 millimeter stopper will be used. Like this, 2 millimeter stopper will be used. And here, the lateral wall is bended, and that's why it's not fully detached. And like this, try to form window by going in. So, we detach the window. And as you can see, just in case, if the hole you think is too small, then in some times you can, you know, create one more hole right next to it. And then, as you can see, a bit wider window will be available. Once the window is formed, then, first, this using separator, you, s you see, uh, you detach, uh, in you do initial detachment from the sinus membrane and using free elevator, like this, uh, distal side and also mesial side, also on the front side, on uh, sinus floor side, and even on the inner side, you detach fully. Or, using sinus curate, like the front part, you can elevate or the opposite side, the uh, back side, you can um, elevate. So you first, uh, you short shaft for this uh, part and then um, for the lang longer one, you can even go uh, deeper. Then sinus membrane will be fully uh, elevated. So on the distal side, you do fully detach. Then, sinus membrane is fully detached, even on the inner side, you see it, there is a full um, elevation.
So you drill up to the uh, area you marked with a laser. So always when you perform sinus craft, make sure it doesn't go too much toward the back. Then you put in the fixture. Then you put it in place with the wrench. Like this. And because we use core drill, there is a bone lid that's been detached. So we bring the bone lid back into the position. So like this. Then surgery is complete. And as you can see here, bone graft material is all in there and bone grafting is done and uh, implant is placed and sinus is fully elevated. So if you're worried about hurting sinus membrane and if you're using last kit, then with dome drill, you can grind the lateral window. And if you use core drill technique, as you've seen in the practice, you can form bony window and then detach the window. So lateral approach can be performed more safely. Now let's answer some questions. We have uh, two questions. First one, it's about of the dome drill and core drill, which one do you recommend more? Now, in my opinion, um, I personally like core drill more because when you use core drill, then the core drill itself is the same in terms of design as cast drill. So re uh, reducing damage of the sinus membrane, it can form the lateral window and detach the window and then position it back after uh, words. So that's why I opt more for core drill. But when you use core drill, sometimes window size can be too small. Then in that case, as I showed you in the practice, you can you know uh, make another window right next to it to widen the window. When you use dome drill, then lateral wall is grinded and fully removed. So in some cases, it might be the easier uh, option. Uh, based and also when you're using last kit, but if uh, in depending on the oral uh, situation of the patient, there's not much of a, a room, then you could use dome drill. So biggest difference is the dome drill, it grinds lateral uh, wall uh, and removes it, while in the core drill, lateral window is formed. So I think depending on cases uh, and indications, uh, you can use either of the two. We'll now go to the next question. So residual bone, what is the uh, criteria for using cast and less? So use cascade or last kit, I think um, that is the question. In the past, 4 millimeters or 5 millimeter was the base of the bone uh, as you have. If it's uh, bigger than that, you do crestal approach. If it's lower than that, if there is a lower a residual bone, then you do lateral approach. But I think such a uh, uh, criteria has now become evasive. So personally, I also uh, of course, the uh, remaining bone height is important, but in case number seven and uh, five exists and there's single missing of number six, then even if the residual goal is less than four millimeter, you have still teeth available right next to them and sinus uh, uh, width is narrow, then I think it's possible with crestal approach. Just in case, when you do crestal approach, the most important thing will be primary stability, securing the primary st stability. 
And also, if you you go for lateral approach, of course, in the past it was based on the bone height, but now、uh, if you are missing the most posterior area, and if you have occlusion of fours because the、uh, opposite teeth is、uh, natural teeth, and you have to use the teeth for longer time, then you do bone grafting and think about sinus augmentation. Then in such case, lateral approach might be the better option. So depending on the patient case, if it's younger patient and Sinus is wider, or with doing crestal approach, sinus membrane、uh, has torn. Uh, hence, uh, with the crestal approach alone,、uh, repairing the torn membrane is uh, really uh, difficult. So with the casket, you do crestal approach. But if the membrane has been torn, then without bone grafting,、uh, put in shorter implant. If not, then as your bone height is too、uh, small, then、uh, with last kit you can do lateral approach. So the torn membrane can be、um, checked with your eye, and by repairing that membrane,、uh, if you approach、uh, with this kit like that, I think it will be good. So only basing whether it's crestal approach or lateral approach based on remaining bone height. Now it's more like depending on all situations and indications. You opt for the more light right one, depending on the situation. And with that,、uh, I would like to conclude、uh, my lecture on last kit. I hope that through this hands-on,、uh, you learned more about last、uh, kit and how to use it. And I would like to end this lecture by thanking your for your attention. Thank you very much. 감사합니다. 감사합니다.